As of lately, I've been playing so much Destiny 2, trying to run the raids, the forges, Gambit Prime, and everything else under the sun when I came to a very sad realization. Swords, as an entire weapon type, are underutilized and to some extent, useless. Okay, maybe not literally useless, but they're definitely not a popular weapon type or anybody's go-to heavy weapon when we have so much going on in the heavy slot. Work of Coil, Whisper of the Worm, 1K Voices, Thunderlord, Hammerhead. It's almost overwhelming how many heavy weapon staples exist in the game, and it's to the point where it's impossible to use all of them. But swords? You would probably see Bigfoot before you frequently saw swords appearing in anybody's everyday loadout. And even if you did, it'd be the World Line Zero, which is a weapon that I commonly see used for speedrunning PvE activities such as raids and nightfalls due to how much ground you can cover with this tesseract perk. I also find myself using a black armory striker shorthand when my exotic slot is taken by something else if I have to complete a bounty that calls for sword kills or if I'm in the mood to mix things up a bit and use something different. Once in a blue moon you might see somebody using a black talent in pvp since it's heavy attack shoots a projectile so you can stay out of harm's way unlike the other swords in the game which require you to be up close and personal with your enemies in order to kill them. But before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video there are several facts about swords in destiny 2 that i'd like to share with you. number one there are a total of 23 swords in destiny 2 only one of them is of the uncommon rarity two of them are rare 18 of them are legendary and two of them are exotic number two all swords in the game except for the black talent Wardline zero quick fang and crown splitter are in the adaptive frame archetype number three only four swords in the game are capable of random roles a by the return was introduced in forsaken striker surehand was introduced in a black armory dlc just in case made his debut in season of the drift and the Steel Sybil Z14 from Vanilla Destiny 2 found its way into Year 2 as a possible Crucible drop in the Forsaken expansion. And last but not least, number 4. Traitor's Fate was a pre-order exclusive weapon, meaning that you could only own this weapon as of presently if you pre-ordered Destiny 2's $100 edition. Now, I'm not for certain if this weapon was made accessible through other means in the game because I never saw it drop in Year 1 as a random drop. Zephyr was a weapon exclusive to 2017's Dawning event. Honor's Edge, at one point in time, was the new monarchy faction's reward if New Monarchy won the faction rally, but was added to New Monarchy's loot pool for the following faction rally. Now, the reason why I specifically pointed out these three swords is because we probably won't ever see a year two or year three version of them because they could only be obtained in very specific ways. Whereas every other sword was either from the Crucible, Vanguard, or the general loot pool of what could be decrypted from legendary engrams. You obviously can't pre-order Destiny 2 anymore since it's been out for a year and a half, so you can't get the Traitor's Fate anymore. We just had another Dawning event this past December and Zephyr was nowhere to be seen and it doesn't look like the faction rounders will ever return so honor's edge will also not return as a result you know now that i think about all of this it's pretty safe to say that swords are definitely in a terrible place right now they've never really had any competitive edge in pvp and the only time anybody would use a sword in crucible is for the fun factor of running around blink soaring people until you're left with no ammo and forced to sword hilt people to death until you inevitably died of course this is something that only had some degree of practicality and quick play now i would never in my life suggest trying to use a sword in competitive unless you're goal is to deliberately screw your team over. See, back in Destiny 1, we had four exotic swords and six legendary swords. The legendary swords weren't used at all due to their lack of a heavy swing attack, which equal to poor DPS. Unlike the swords in D2, which all have an uppercut attack as a heavy swing attack. The exotic sword known as Dark Drinker was the best go-to DPS method to take down Axis, the final boss of the Wrath of Machine Ray in Destiny 1. And it's good to know that this weapon is pretty much confirmed to be returning next season, but it's really difficult to get excited for it when Destiny 2 has been out for a year and a half and swords have yet to find a reason to be frequently used. The Black Armory introduced the Striker Shorthand and as of presently, it's the only sword in the game that can roll the Surrounded perk. A lot of people don't know this, but this perk is solely responsible for the Striker Shorthand to qualify as one of the best DPS weapons in the game. And you can up the ante even further by applying a Surrounded spec mod to this weapon. I was lucky enough to drop the curated roll of the Striker Shorthand, which rolls with Surrounded, alongside a regular, randomly rolled version of this weapon, which also rolls Surrounded. Yeah. Yeah, RNG Jesus definitely blessed me that day. Astacross uploaded a video on how to dish out some crazy damage numbers with this weapon, so make sure you click the link to his video in the description box for this video. You know, I thought about something. Whenever one particular weapon does something or is capable of doing something spectacular, 
it brings attention to its entire weapon type as a whole. And I noticed that this has always been a trend in the Destiny franchise. So with that in mind, my only proposal is for swords to also appear in the kinetic and energy weapon slots to see if this would shed some light on swords as an entire weapon type. Now I don't see this as out of the ordinary when we have weapons like the Arbalest in the game, which is the only non-heavy linear fusion rifle to ever exist in Destiny 2. And the interesting thing about the Arbalest is that it didn't have its potency dialed down in order to exist outside of the heavy slot. Yeah, it's very much powerful and viable. This thing is in the same archetype as the Crooked Fang, which furthers the fact that linear fusion rifles are also not powerful enough to necessitate them existing in the heavy slot as a whole. A majority of y'all are probably over there thinking like, how could swords exist in the kinetic and energy slot and still be balanced in PvP? Check this out. In PvP, swords could take special ammo, start off with four swipes and require two sword swipes to kill somebody. They could kill somebody in one swipe provided that the enemy's health is below half. That would be 100% fair because swords are more difficult to get kills with than shotguns because you're required to be literally within arm's reach of your opponent to kill him with a sword. And it annoys me to realize that swords like the Abide the Return from the Dreaming City and Just In Case from Gambit Prime and Reckoning look like they should be in the kinetic slot. I look at these weapons and I don't see how they could possibly exist only in the heavy slot. It just doesn't make sense. I'm not for sure if swords will ever be of any relevancy in Destiny 2, but I hope one day we receive year two versions of the class exclusive swords from year one, if anything. I'm referring to the Warlock's Eternal Edge, a Titan's Crown Splitter, and a Hunter's Quit Fang. For each class to have their own exclusive sword was such an amazing concept and huge missed opportunity that was never really capitalized upon. This was a concept that wasn't even done in Destiny 1, and the class exclusive swords, in my opinion, were some of the most deserving weapons to make it into Year 2. Using a Quit Fang makes Hunters carry the sword like a ninja, and a Crown Splitter has an overhead slam attack that no other sword in the game has. Then you have the Eternity's Edge, which does nothing special. And as a Warlock main, this is a very, very sad realization. But yeah, I really hate seeing something that was once amazing be so underutilized to the point where people forget that it exists. As stated previously, swords were all the rage in D1, and I hope that something happens in the future so that they can have the same power fantasy and popularity in D2. But that does it for this one, everybody. In the comment section, tell me how you feel about swords in Destiny 2, and let me know if you even use them at all. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to my neck of the woods, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more elite gaming content. But with that being stated, 1LHD is over and out. Y'all take it easy. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen.